Okay, it's You're Monday, on. July. Are you ready, Joe? You're on. Monday, July 8th, uh, 9 o'clock. We're opening up the selectmen's weekly meeting. The first thing to do is salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is the 19 Mile Bay Improvement Project. We sent out bids due months on July 1st, and we needed to extend it to July 8th, which is today. And I have a bid here from GW Brooks and Sons. Do we have a representative? Uh, representative. I'm Lloyd Wood. Dave Kirby. Dave, Bill. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our town. Glad to be here. Beautiful day today. <laughs> Medically sealed. Yeah. We have an opening here. Yeah, no. No. Good quality envelope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is from Marie Brooks. She's another one. What do you know if you were going to open that? Yeah. Do you want to go? Here, catch. This is like the Russian dolls. We <laughs> yeah. yeah. try and keep, in here. We try and keep chip away from sharp objects. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a knife. This family doesn't want to have an house. Okay. Do we want to? Um, I guess we can provisionally award the bid. We have a certificate of insurance, and we have. So the number is on the back, on the right there. Yep. Okay, the total bid price is $71,537. Um, hopefully it meets the conditions that we set for the um, improvements. I'll go look, I think it's only 50 something. Yeah. And that, I believe, exceeds the yeah, I think it does. Let me check. budget. If I may, gentlemen, um, if you look at the bottom of, on that second page of ours, I've also, because I was made aware that what you guys had for a budget, mm -hmm. and there was no way I could possibly get it to that with the scope of work you had. Right. Um, so there's the potential for phasing of this work is what I've called out there. Um, potentially over two budget cycles if that helps that. Um, but unfortunately, I couldn't, I tried like crazy to get it down to that, what you guys had, and I just couldn't, there's no way I could make that happen. So. It's like Article 8. Yeah, we have, we have a warrant article for $40,551 for 19 Mile Bay Improvement Project. Oh, excuse me, did I quote the wrong one? That's the other one. We want, that was the RIB. No, the RIB is 4587. Yeah. No, that's just what, that's correct. Is it the right one? Okay. Yeah, that was based on the uh, estimate we got from the designer. Jim Ryan's. Yep. Right. 4551. $40,551. Mm -hmm. And the bid is $71,537. So it's about $31,000 short. That's how much money you have. So I, I guess with you're the only bidder, I can't from your 19 mile bid. Beach improvements list 
figure out where thirty-one thousand dollars could be separated out. Basically, the way that I looked at it was we could potentially do the wall work um, this year, mm -hmm. which would be removing the existing walls, supplying and installing the new wall, uh, supplying and installing the uh, beach sand, um, the uh, grid, uh, they, they're armoring that ramp. Mm -hmm. um, ins installing that sill fence and our mobilization of the site, um, we could potentially do that for forty thousand two thirty-eight, and then the remaining value would have to be for all of your plantings, um, the rain gardens, the uh, grading of the parking lot, and things like that. That would have to be done in a, obviously another budget cycle for you folks. Um, that's the only way I could. I tried like crazy moving stuff around to try so, to get us in there. Can you put that list together? Absolutely. And price it? Yes. So we're not, I don't think we're ready to award this. No, I, yeah, I don't think we can based upon what we have to pay, lot, but yeah, if you discussion. can spell it out as a phase cool. thing with a <clears throat> price certain for, for specific work, then it gives us something to work with. Is it Steve Wingate? Is it Jack who speaks for us in sort of negotiation? Or do we? Us? What I was thinking is if he could sit down with someone that we appoint. Uh, yeah, I guess, well, we're going to have to have him sit down with Jack anyway to make sure he's complying with the contract. Um, yeah, so, so I guess in my mind, another question becomes with the permits, the, uh, how does a, how would a phased approach work in terms of satisfying the state? Uh, because you know we've laid out this is what we're going to do. Right. And if we if we only do part of it, is that going to be in compliance to a degree, or what do we have to go from there? So yeah, and how much of the disturbed area needs to be um, stabilized <coughs> to satisfy the ES? And that is also, that went into my thought on this, was that mm -hmm. I felt that if we could get that stuff closest to the lake stabilized, mm -hmm. it's going to help to alleviate some of the concerns that EPS might have, is that you're stabilizing that section first, mm -hmm. was my thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have, yeah. you do, have you done similar projects? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Any that I could go look at? Um, sure. Um, I can get you a list of them. Okay. Um, they're residential projects, okay. most of those. Um, lakefront is obviously not so much municipal lakefront stuff that's being done. It's more um, more residential things. Yep. So I'd have to just get some permission, okay. but absolutely. Can I look at the paperwork? Sure. I'll, I move we table uh, making a decision on this to get more information. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have any questions on what, of us? Um, just uh, would you like me to meet with Jack today, or when would you guys like me to try to set, set that up? Well, he's right over there, so maybe, I don't know if he has time today, but if he does, it would be great. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'd say at a time that works for you and for him. Sure. Yeah. And part of it may have to do with uh, the Conservation Commission, Steve Wingate. So yes. I'll have to, Jack will know what he can handle and what has to be handled by somebody else. Sure. Okay. Jack, Jack has worked with DES on a number of other projects uh, that have been unique. So. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Hey, no, thank you for having me. Pleasure to meet you. Good luck. Right. Yes, Thanks. thank you very much. Have a nice day. Okay, I'll put you up. Put that back in the folder. Oh, I'm going to send that right. Oh, Jack, I think. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item of business is public input. Is there? Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip Jack until he gets through his appointment. Um, is Jim Bean here? Not yet, but should be, I'm sure, any minute. Clay Gallagher? No. <laughs> He's not all here. Hi, <laughs> Clay. Okay, here. we'll do the transfer station first.
Oh, I guess I put minutes after. For some reason, I don't usually know why. I don't know why I did that. Why did I do that? Why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I just it's, a, it's a holiday week. That's yeah, what I got. Yeah, mine was somewhere else. <laughs> Do you have another one for Thank you. I think I made enough of that one Just to... Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry, I can't touch it. Thank you. Um, okay, monthly... <coughs> monthly totals for June 11 uh, solid waste compactors, 16 CD containers, two plastic containers. We had a glass shipment out. If you look at the uh, uh, <coughs> the first and second page of the staple ones. Um, we had uh, a glass shipment, uh, 16.43 tons we got in our container. Uh, $180 cost uh, transport and $575 cost of crush from NRA. Uh, for Anna propane, we had three uh, pickup. Uh, two scrap metal pickups, 16.75 tons. Revenue was $1,275. We had a, a truckload of uh, OCC cardboard shipped out, 22.65 tons. Revenue of $850. Uh, steel tin can, 30 yard container pickup, 3.06 tons. Cost $247 <coughs> for uh, shipping for transport and uh, revenue of $137 in that. What is OCC? Uh, it's a cor official corrugated carbon. I think that's what it stands for. And aluminum, you're gathering that? We, we have uh, 16,500 tons of aluminum right now. We, we, yeah, we, we need uh, probably another eight or nine bales to have a full truckload. Okay. Now, the prices of everything are now. Aluminum used to be 70 cents a can, or 70 cents a pound, it's now between 35 and 40 cents a pound. So um, it may pay to hold it a little bit. Um, we have no drop dead date on that. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep checking the prices. But it doesn't spoil Everything, sick. everything is, is down, but we're still making uh, revenue. Except for C and D. Right. Um, the, uh, <coughs> we hosted, I, I actually hosted, uh, I got some, Info and message traffic from from Karen with Tamworth was looking at uh, places to go and visit. Um, they heard that we had a good facility and, and wanted to come out. I hosted them um, a week ago or ten days ago, something like that. But they had about eight or nine people, a selectman um, and recycling committee, and the guy who runs a transfer station. Uh, come out and they spent about three hours and uh, and I showed them over the whole facility um, not to tout our own horn but this is a uh, uh, I just got that today in the mail from them um, they were very very grateful and uh, they want to set something up like we have um, because they uh, and they got tired of the, the single stream stuff so <laughs> they, they basically uh, want to do what we're doing, trying to figure it out. Um, and uh, <coughs> uh, Lloyd was uh, present when we did that. Uh, did a great job. Um, Island Day is on the 20th of July, 19 Mile Bay, 8.30 a.m. to noon. New stickers are uh, still in the transfer station. Small portion of the recycling building um, Peeled up. Uh, Jake Stanley has done a uh, <coughs> a proposal um, to uh, fix a panel that's there, uh, and, and basically gave me three options. Um, I think we the, the option just to replace the panel and fix the panel and, and seal it and do all this is five hundred bucks. Um, and I think we ought to do that right away. The, the, the second option is to inspect the entire roof of the facility, which is old. Uh, a lot of the screws are popping up. Um, and he would do spot repairs to all of the screws and then uh, spray it, power wash it, and spray it. 
with the anti-rust uh, material, um, that would cost $1,800. Um, that includes fixing the panel. So um, I, I think we ought to hold off on that maybe until we determine where we're going to use the rest of that money because we have a boiler that has to be replaced right. uh, before we get to the learning. Um, so uh, we may want to hold off on that and just replace the panel right now and maybe put this in as a warrant for next year. Those full length roof panels? Um, There's a receipt. That, Oh no, that, that you mean uh, all the way up the roof? Right. No, there's a seam. There's seams. So um, like eight, eight foot panels or something in there? Yeah, over, over that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was told that uh, by contractors that when that was installed, the cheap way of doing it was putting the screws right into plywood. Yeah. And, and plywood just doesn't last for decades. But, yeah. Is that your understanding? That's, that's what I, that's what so I. So it wasn't heard. strapped? I don't think so. So it's a bigger project than just yeah. And now, it, now, in order to do the whole roof, to uh, completely uh, complete roof, clean spray, uh, power wash, spray with the anti rust, um, and then replace uh, any panels necessary is seventeen thousand dollars. Wow. So. So that's what he's got at 17,100. So that's a, it's a major project. That's why I'm defaulting to the uh, yeah, I mean, $500 fix on the panel right, right now. And at that point in time, I mean, 17 grand, I, I could dig out my notes on my roof, but I probably get as much metal on my roof as you've got there. And that's later, a lot of money. That yeah, should be a whole roof replacement. Well, we need to, we need to put it up a bit. Yes, absolutely. That's why. I, and uh, well, if we're going to replace the roof, we need to strap it and do it right if they haven't done that. Right. right. The only advantage is there's no valleys. Right. Right. And there is, has been a leak that has been diagnosed as possibly from related to this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do make different diameter screws, too. So you can put in a bigger diameter yeah. Yeah. if you've got a loose one. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of a temporary fix. Yeah. So, so you know, I. I've kind of temporarily given them the okay to just replace that one panel right. strip that's that's been blown up and and fix that and seal it and do whatever's necessary to do it and uh, so we'll go with that and then further study for yeah uh, for a long term solution well, yeah. okay as he's replacing that panel it gives him an opportunity to at least see a small segment of the roof right and he said there's a lot of the screws that are that are popped. You know, because he's been up there to put rubber down uh, in the interim. Um, the uh, signage is up. Uh, advertisement for hazardous waste uh, collection is up on the side of the building and up in numerous locations throughout town. Uh, July 27th, Meredith, 8.30 to noon. I don't recommend that one because the lines are horrendous. Uh, the traffic is horrendous. I do recommend the 3rd of August uh, at Ospi Town Garage. Mm -hmm. And the swap shop so far um, has been excellent. Um, it is a huge uh, impact to the parking. Um, I, I did take a couple pictures, so if you're interested sometime, I can show you the pictures. But uh, um, there was probably uh, 12 cars over in front of that yesterday and we only had two could make two lanes in front of the recycling building so at points in time um so maybe you moved it further to the left right? i moved it further so to that's, the left and that was a good move yes to, uh, to get yeah, a little further exactly. away from uh, the uh so we traffic. we may have to figure out some better way to control the parking in there um so that it doesn't impede on the recycling and go around the corner of the building for us. Yeah. Um, you can put some lines on it or something. Yeah. And, and you know, that's it's, it's only a temporary thing, but when there's a commercial guy that comes in and he's got, and people are waiting in line, and then you get down there and there's, you know, yeah. more lanes, it, it, it's frustrating sometimes for some people. 
but uh, if having it manned, it was the right decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was the right decision, and they're doing so far. They're doing a great job. So um, you just have to remind it that whatever is outside at the end of the day has to go inside. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful about what you take. And, and we've had a couple people start an argument with them about, I want to put this lamp in here, you know, and the, uh, the lady said, no, you can't do it. And, and it's right there, nothing that plugs in. And uh, so, um, and we had a couple of bed frames and complete parts. You know, it looks nice, a nice headboard, nice footboard, nice rails, but no, no, no uh, um, hardware and no slats and, and uh, you know, so then I said, well, that has to go in construction over it. Well, I don't want to do that. And I said, well, you can do it the Episcopal Church or the, you know, Melbourne Church, or, but if they'll take it, but I, it'll sell a lot better if you have all the parts. Um, so, so it's working as... So the containers to the left of the swap shop are for televisions and that kind of thing. So as you're as looking you're, at the swap shop, yep. the swap shop's on the left, the red I'm container is on the other yeah, left. Yeah, the, the red container is electronics, the white container is tires, and I have the door at the other end because they have to haul it from the swap shop end. So the truck that I'm comes just in, wondering if there's parking available there straight in <coughs> if we move those containers to the right. uh, it would be hard it would be hard to do that okay. because then then you're 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 cutting off the the flow around the corner when somebody's dropping TVs off or retires. No, I'm thinking of putting yeah. them on the grass. Yeah it, take them right off the pavement for parking. Well the the containers or the, no, no, the people, <coughs> yeah, the swap shop people, get them off the table. Yeah, we, we we try. We can't we can't put that swap shop container down any further, and we have the two Planet A containers right. in between, um, because that's got to be picked up by a twenty foot six foot street truck. So it's I, I think we're okay. Uh, I mean, it's well, we had the busiest we can. We'll continue to evaluate, right? Yep. Yep. And there are other locations where the swap shop can go that. <laughs> That uh, right. That you when you look at it, thought this is the best location, and maybe right. it is, and maybe as we go down the road, right. you'll make the determination that you know from congestion or whatever, mm -hmm. a different location works. But yeah. and yeah. and maybe this was the busiest weekend of the summer, and at the swap shop, and and we won't run into the congestion right. next next week. Right. But the uh, which is a good transition. Uh, Mm -hmm. We ran out of space with 10 minutes to go. We went through one compactor on Saturday from two, <coughs> two empty compactors to number one compactor full at one o'clock on Saturday. Now, if you transition that time, we should have run out with a number two mm -hmm. at probably 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Right. We were extremely lucky that the majority of the heavy traffic was Saturday, and it was lighter on Sunday. Um, so I'm going to sit down and and draw up options of where we go from here. There's a, there's a number of different ways to to control that. Um, some being hardware, you know, again, build another compactor, okay? Some being control what goes in there and when it goes in um, by maybe getting a separate, smaller compactor for the commercial guys um, and keep that out of the private street. Um, third option, uh, limit, you know, when somebody comes in and cleans a house out, that's not normal household trash. Okay. You, you know, you, you figure normal household trash, six, seven bags at the back of a pickup. Yeah. When somebody comes in with a U-Haul with loaded with everything. And it's not separated. Okay. And it's not separated. That shouldn't go in the compact because that, that limits our space. There's, there's a number of different approaches, you know, having a spare compactor, but then how safe is that? for us to be trying to pull out a full compactor and put a, a new one in 
mm-hmm. with the asphalt being warm, um, you know, all we're going to be able to do is pull the thing. And it's not going to dig up the asphalt um, because they're heavy. They're, you know, it's 11 tons of material inside of however heavy that can come into the containers. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll write up a, um, a, a study, you know, some kind of a white paper and give options on where we want to go from here. But that's something for the future that's becoming short term future rather than long term. Have been watching the amount grow. Yeah, have we had this specific problem before? Where we, we ran, ran out once before last year. Um, we ran out of space. Um, and, and, and the key, you know, to not running out of space or coming close to it is to have it empty on Saturday morning. Well, when waste management can't, when you call on Wednesday and they can't change it out before Saturday, mm-hmm. um, then we're, we're in trouble if it's on a big weekend. Um, I so know I've talked to you about this and Wolfboro has a clause that when they call, isn't it? Yeah, three hours. They, but they, they, right. But they, uh, when I bring that up, they, uh, <laughs> they, no, we're not doing that ever again. You know. The other thing is so. that you only have two work days, right? To them. correspond with their five work days, right? And I, and I've been there when you've tried to call on weekends and there's no answer at the dispatcher, right? Oh uh, yeah, they. They're not going to answer anything or do anything on weekends, even like Island Day. I'd preferably like the container delivered Saturday morning, first mm-hmm. thing, so that it's not sitting there on the pier. Uh, Gathering. You know, yes. Uh, when we open the door Saturday morning, it's a quarter full already. You know, that, and, and it's stuff that shouldn't be in there. <laughs> you know, that doesn't help much. But um, and then they don't pick it up. But they do provide that that freeze that service really. so I'm not going to complain too much uh, when we're getting it the place. Um, <clears throat> and that's um, if you go to the last page uh, you can see um, <clears throat> in the table with the uh, year to date even though I don't have the specific tonnage in uh, if you just look at the number of compactors from the end of June 59, last year 50, CD 62, 62, so we're right on, on spot on CD, um, plastic 15, last year 14, um, and, and, and then compare the, the tonnage down from there. So it shows that we're we're, we're getting more stuff in the compactors um, than we've had before. So again, it's a reverse of the last two or three years where the CD was building now. And part of that is that we're no longer doing mixed paper. But if I look at last year for paper, you only did one of paper. So that, that well, does we, Yeah, we stopped. Right. That was that, one paper shipment right. uh, before. Um, but yeah, and that was 23 tons. Right. So, so in a typical year in the past, how many tons of paper do we ship? 23. 23 For the whole year? Yeah, 23. To, it, it depended. You'd have 23 one year, 23 one year, and then you'd have two shipments one in January and one. So it, it's spread out over the year. Um, I'd have to look back. Yeah. to get more specific, but it's just like tires. You know, we'll go along and we'll have two years or three years where we only ship one container a year. And then it'll just work out where the, the, the shipment it, it ends in the first of January and you get another one in December mm-hmm. in that year. So you have two plus a row. Um, that's why it's hard to get that budget line exact. Yeah. Um, and, and it is, it doesn't. But, but I guess my sense is that the increase in solid waste is more than just throwing the mixed paper in. We're adding, uh, the, mixed, yes, we're, it's we're adding the mixed paper in, but oh, oh, there's other stuff as this, well. This year is definitely growth. I mean, there's been more people, there's been more people coming in the facility this year than ever before um, in, since about they, a month ago. And they all have stickers. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, they get, if, if they don't have them, they get them. 
Um, I mean, we're we're right now we've sold um, at least 1,600, 1,700 stickers in that tall park. So yeah, we're gonna have at least that many. So you're averaging about six and a half tons of the container on the CD. CD. Yeah. Last year we were on six point eight. Yeah, it dries a little bit depending right. on what's in it. And do you have your revenue figure on the CD? Uh, I I don't have. Um, how close are we? <clears throat> we're 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 right. I I think pretty much spot on or very close to. Yeah. Uh, Right now, we have, we've uh, at the end of June, we've uh, our revenue is fifty one thousand five hundred, mm -hmm. which is probably ten thousand dollars more than I I don't that's have exactly gross. compared. Yeah, that's gross. Right. Yeah, because um, one of the things we talked about over the weekend was, you know, can we control the CD at all? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, and that was my next. There, I mean, I. I got thinking maybe we should just limit the pickup trucks. Well, I mean, we're, we're not obligated to take this. Yes, not. And let, me, let me let me show you, and a picture's worth a thousand words, as many people have said before. But um, uh, if I can figure out this high tech stuff, oh, that's wrong. Okay. I mean, having a container, I've had it done. My place you get a container dropped off you fill it up they come and pick it up that's that's the that's the cars in front of the drop shop yeah okay and and so that only leaves two rows here mm -hmm. so when this gets built Maybe up we should okay. start charging <laughs> well the th the key is you know and then you get two or three individuals <laughs> yeah i want to have a social session and you got to very tactfully, you know, say, "Hey, can you move it around the corner?" Or um, parking uh, meters. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when so, you have a clean transfer <laughs> station. Um, yeah, I was looking at uh, where okay. is that the flies and the smell of the old dump? That's right. People would hang around so much. Yeah, it must not have. <laughs> Out there, we can have a little target practice. Right. Yeah, the vectors. Um, I must not. I must not have the. Uh, <coughs> I'll see if I can get it. But I had a picture of a, a trailer that came in and dumped the load, and the load is sticking, you know, six or seven feet out the top of the container, and it's two thirds of the container is full. From one trailer. One load. Yeah. And more and more people are buying these these trailers now. Um, and that that is definitely an option on how to control. Yeah. Uh, you know, waste management builds, uh, they have bags, they have 10 yard containers, they've got 15 yard containers. So whatever size project you're doing, that, that that's the correct way to do it. If, um, if it's more than a small job that would fit in the back of a pickup truck or something like that. Yeah. And there's a lot of facilities that have done that, uh, that have changed over to that for this specific reason. So that was the other white Sounds like something white paper. we ought to entertain. Well, when I first started, there was maybe two people that had those trailers. Now we have at least 14 or 15, and some of them are just brutal sized. And I guess we can talk to Jack about it. I, I don't know that there are 15 teardown projects going on in Tuftimer, so I'm, I'm still concerned that a lot of this stuff isn't from Tuftimer. Well, you know, all I could do is ask him. Right. And, and, uh, and they said yes. So, you know, this, uh, and I don't, don't want to go into names. Yeah. And, but uh, I'm sure there's probably some that are trying to sneak in but uh it's local guys with you know that are buying these trailers um yeah and it's so. revenue neutral it's not really 
Well, it is when it reaches, it is when it fills up. Right. I turned, for the first time ever, I turned away a, uh, a trailer load. So I think we we focused on the revenue piece, the cost of revenue piece is C&D, and it seems to me that you've got that pretty well addressed. So now what it's we're talking about, now what we're talking about is running out of space for like people the, here in town, like with the compact. with the uh, uh, refuse compactor, running out of space for somebody that's got stuff in the back of their pickup truck that's supposed to go in a C&D container, and they're all full because one guy comes in and dumps a load into a container that takes most of most right. of the uh, container. And then you're spending what a half hour, forty five minutes straightening the load out. Right. So uh, you know, every time a load gets dumped in like that, you got to go out with a backhoe and you got to try to square it away and try to be prepared for the next load. And you know, if you got two guys maxed out on the cardboard from a summer camp coming in and trying to bail a bale, and two, two or three of those things coming in, then you end up with with two or three of the containers that are two thirds full that no one else can dump in until they get fixed out. And then the guy's gonna spend an hour out there um, right. trying to square them away. Um, and, and it ends up being a run out of space type deal. Um, so, you know, again- I also I'll remember getting yelled at by Fred Sargent for not layering my- Yeah, exactly. Stuff in yeah. there. Um, and, and you try to get them to hold it at six to eight feet length, max length, and you know these things are ten to twelve feet long, and, you get, and then they can't dump it good. And you, you know you try to help them with the backhoe to get the stuff out of the trailer. Um, it, it's constant, but um, those are the two issues for the future that we have to look at. Uh, yeah, is 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 running out of space. The more critical one um, is a compactor because it's it's very difficult. You know, the one we did, we shut down. Um, I, I have uh, like uh, 10 minutes left yesterday, I let them dump in the, in the CD, but that's not really uh, a good idea. You know, then you have an open CD with, with stuff in it and if they can't pick it up till Tuesday, you're, you know, Kind of wildlife and critters. Yeah, the seagulls will show up. Yeah, right yeah. So, um, you know, we gotta we, we gotta come to some decision about the future of what we want to do. Um, and uh, I know, like Moultonboro, when they transition, and 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 I have heard, I haven't talked to anybody at Moultonboro. I I heard they were just absolutely slammed on Saturday as well. Um, and. Uh, well, Labor or Fourth of July weekend is probably our biggest weekend of the summer. Right. Right. Yeah, but I don't think it's gonna. I don't think this summer is gonna pare down. I mean, every indication that I get is everything. Every weekend has been um, more, more, more. more, more. We don't have the ability to pull a container out. No. To park it. We we another one we can pull it out, but the problem is that the wheels on the bottom don't work. If one of them is frozen yeah. up. Then you're dragging it along the asphalt where those you don't have the equipment to handle correctly, right? Safe. I mean, you you can you can pull you you can physically pull it out. We pull it but, straight out. We but even up that's not how you that's not how you handle it because no. it needs to be up on a set of rails up off the asphalt. The yeah, especially when it's loaded. And, yeah, uh, because they can pull it up and back the truck as they're pulling it up. Right. So the wheels don't really move that much. And they, they stay on the cement, right? And they stay on the cement flat there because once you get to the asphalt of the cabin, it, it would just dig right in if you're not careful. And, you know, and uh, sure. So, if you wanted to do that correctly, then you you try to get an old an old uh, hand me down um, roll off roll off truck. Or is there? I mean, I don't know, Casella or any of those guys. Do they work on the uh, Well, you have to change the contract. They you know, can't just come and move a con no, container? No, it's a waste management container. So you need rules. You know? Well, yes. yeah. you know, think about it. If you start moving somebody else's container oh, and yeah. there's an issue with it, then... Well, it's like the propane companies. You yeah, know, that's right. The there's an issue with it, then it's, then you own the issue. And now you're... Uh, right. He and I have visited uh, several spots. <coughs> One of them was Durham. Durham, for five years, shared a truck. 
and it didn't work out. And there's no two place, two facilities closer together than the one on campus and the, the right. Yeah, they they ended up buying their own roll off car. But they also are close enough They're close to Harding Meadows, because close they, enough yeah. to Rochester that they actually transport themselves. themselves. Um, but the, no, they tried the, the, it sounded good on paper, they said. Yeah. Um, so well, it's easy enough to run the numbers on doing your own transport, but my, my sense is we're way, way too, too small yeah, to, too far out. to, you know, you, you got to keep the truck running all the time. Oh, yeah, we just yeah. don't do that. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's. Uh, I have a couple of questions if he's done. Yep. Uh, the painting looks nice. Oh, yeah, around the office. Yeah. And Dave, Dave uh, Wentworth came out and did that and matched uh, what he did with the building. So. And saved you some paint? Yeah, and he, and he gave you the uh, five gallon container. With about three gallons in it, so we have some touch it. Well, thank you for keeping the business yeah. in town. He's yeah. treated you right, especially Positive. the uh, the uh, Quonset that he. Yeah, he did a really good job. He resurrected that, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, how are we doing on the generator? Uh, I don't know. I know the generator's in. I don't know anything about um, what the requirements are for where they're going to place the generator, and you know. Uh, because we got a, the water pump head out there as well. Um, and I don't know if there's any trenching requirement. Well, the nice thing is you have a few more warm months. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, where right, that's now, did, did I remember that, that the, the trench is done and the, fixed? The trench from building to building. Right. But now you put the generator out there. You can't put that right up next to the, next to the, uh, I asked building. I asked Jack if I, there was any more trenching needed to get from the generator to the building, and he said he didn't think so. Okay, okay. yeah, where you store the propane tanks, you gotta get the propane from there to the generator. Mm -hmm. So if that can be above ground, I, I guess it can be above ground. But, um, you know, I know from mine at home that propane goes from the tank to the generator, and then from the, the uh, the electric is underground to the house. So, so um, who's doing the installation? Do we know? Um, Scott, uh, Scott Thompson. Thompson just doing yeah. it. So probably we should get Scott Thompson. Well, time. I've asked him. He he's got the generator, um, and he 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 doesn't know about the other the other uh, stuff, the propane tanks. He did the, he did the townhouse and did a nice job. Yeah, but he's he's working with Jack. I think it's on the project. Uh, the next thing is. How are you and Jim coming on the brush chipper? Uh, I, 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 I realize it's the holidays and yeah, I have more time, time on that. <coughs> sure. Yeah, I can certainly talk about it. Yeah. Um, the boiler? Yeah, that that uh, need, that has to get. I mean, I, you know, you got to realize if that boiler goes out on Wednesday and doesn't turn on, and we come in on Saturday morning, and it's 40 degrees in there, 45 <coughs> degrees. Um, by the time you go home that day, you're done. Uh, I mean, you're just, it's that's right, radiant it's heat right thrilled to the bone. And it won't heat up in a, in, in a no. day. No. Um, the, the, uh, we did that once or twice, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't think that's a safe So we put that out on the street? The boiler? No, that was that was in the original price of the building maintenance mm -hmm. and the budget line that we had. Um, Replacing the boiler. Yeah, and it was it was like um, I can't Jack can tell you the numbers better, but um, well, you make put it a work in progress. Okay. Well, we ought to do it this summer as opposed to later. Uh, absolutely, that's why. Uh, yeah. yeah. They surfaced it in the spring, early spring, um, and the pricing, the pricing was between the boiler itself was like five thousand, mm -hmm. and the controls they want to change the controls uh, so that they're current and uh, accurate, and, and I don't know the range in pricing from that. Jack told me eleven thousand for the entire project. Yeah, something like that. 
But the concern that I have is we also have two other uh, heating situations. One, there is no main heat in his building, right. and it's been talked about over the years. And at some point, the one in Melbourne Village needs to be replaced. And right. I'm just wondering if this is the coming year that we have a global yeah, well, we, approach. Yeah, I, I mean, not to jump in line, but we, I, I don't think we can wait. No, if it's in the budget, we're going to just get it done. Yeah. Well, <coughs> yeah, that, at least put it out on the street and get some bids in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, uh, I, I know we've had, uh, Jack has worked with um, Ed Butler, Ed Butler yes. um, and, and gotten prices, so I, I don't know where that stands. Well, I realize that it's yeah. summertime and there's a lot on the plate. One last thing is, is there money between your two departments to replace the stop sign uh, in the one-way traffic? Uh, that, that's not a legal stop sign. Coming up the hill, the glass, yeah. even is there money in the budget? Or we still have some money left in science. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have any. What I'm thinking is that you mentioned that the sign, when you broke the uh, sign about the brush, and, and right. you've got NRA, and I'm thinking they're back to back, so change them at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. So are you, with waste management, are you limited in days to four days a week? Or do they Five. Work? They, do they, they work Monday through Friday. So their schedule's Monday through Friday. So maybe an option for this heavy weekends is to open up on Monday. So you can change your compactors around. I mean, people, I don't think people mind holding their trash overnight. Just to that could, that could, that, you know, I mean, close, close Sunday? Well, you're going to stop them from dumping when you're com compact. Come back to school, right? Yes. So it's full at noon. Come back tomorrow. What one town did is they went to half a day on Sunday and opened Monday. But that means they had no well, all, budget. All, all of this includes coordination with the hauler so that he can pick up a right. container when it's full. So right. If it if it's if it's full, let's say it's full on Sunday and you shut down with the idea that you're gonna open on Monday and he can't swap them out first thing Monday morning, it doesn't do you any good anyway because you still got right. full compactors. See the, the way and, and it's right. not just our town, it's all the towns and what the capability of waste management has. Sure. Um, they only have so many trucks, they, they can't so be trucks and pulling everybody at the same So for time. us, they know we're closed on Monday. So even though we need to pick up Monday morning first thing. They're not going to do that until Tuesday morning. So they've got a day play with us. Mm -hmm. They know they have to service Durham, UNH. And, and so they're going to the UNH in another spot on Monday and then do us on Tuesday. Um, <coughs> I schedule it for Thursday after Tuesday and Wednesday. They know they have a day play. And, and so if they have an emergency come up, they'll, they'll knock one of, our, uh, one of our scheduled tandems um, and come in and, uh, and do the emergency, and then they'll do one of our tandems Thursday and then move the other one to Friday. They know they have until Friday close of business so that we're uh, built. And of course, the, the weekend like July 4th, it, it swaps everybody. Sure. So, I'm sure they weren't working on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, which, kind of right. And, and they're scheduled up as well. Yeah. Right. And so trying to get them now, or, or trying to get something on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, they're going to be they're going to be shifted a day for a week. Well, you're going to look at the whole range of options. You're going to come back and talk to us about right what they are, and we can have a further conversation in right. terms of you know how do we make this thing work better. Yeah, right? correct. Okay. That's going to take a little while because yeah. uh, I mean, we're just swamped every day. So. Yeah, and think about my suggestion. Monday it really doesn't work in the summer because you got. You got people that want to leave Sunday. Yeah, I came up for the weekend, I partied all weekend, and I'm going to go that was the, the, the That was the main justification for keeping it on right. Sundays. Sure. Right. Um, and, and, uh, oh, yeah, I know of people that uh, the right. transfer station is And they don't drop it there. The last stop before they're they're going to drop it someplace. They're going to, it someplace. Right. They're going to find, find one of those open containers around town or else. Yeah, they'll drop it someplace. So. 
Okay. Well, thank Great. you. Thanks. Thanks. Good luck at home. Yeah. Uh, I just want to Thank you. Our next appointment is with our highway department. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Is our paving all done? Not quite. Brown uh, road has been completed and Sawyer road is completed. Mm -hmm. We actually have uh, the reclaimer scheduled for this Wednesday on Dane Road. So we could be in pretty good shape by the end of the week. Did both those other projects come mm -hmm. within the budget? So we haven't got the final bill, but I asked about it. Oh, we said it. we're right on. He thinks so. he's right on the money of all the money. Thank you. Yeah, Brown Road came out nice. Yeah, it's yeah, I thought that looked pretty good. Yeah. Actually, Sawyer Road, quite a change from. Yes. Oh, I've been a lot of comments on Sawyer Road, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. once they pay both ends, that's when the bumps really just you know, either sure. yeah. happen. But, uh, yeah, no. Well, that was a long process. Yeah. <laughs> it they actually right. came in and they said, yeah. I think he would be uh, saving about $12,000 by funding those projects. So thank you. Yeah. So um, we've got most of the grading completed in town. Swim lines were installed. The beavers are back in town. We're kind of fighting with those a little bit at the time. Um, and we're basically, like I said, we're almost finished with the Dane Road prep. We're still, we're still there today. Uh, trying to make sure that we see a bump. We're trying to dig them out, make sure we got that. The ditch line's been all corrected. We actually had to have a hammer, a guy with a hammer come in on an excavator and break out some of the lead. Um, we did find ledge in the road too. There's, there's ledge there. There's quite a bit. Um, you know, not much you can do about it. Just should be a solid base, but water does come up through at times. So. That's why we have drainage, so it should be in pretty good shape. Um, that's really all we have. Right. The limb on Ledge Hill Road, are we going to get rid of that? Or did we get rid of it? We moved it, but you cut it. Yes, I actually have somebody with a bucket truck coming to take care of that as well. The, the dump truck's going to bound that for just knocking the hell out of everything. So. Yeah, yeah, we really need to. Uh, the problem I saw was them trying to avoid the limb, and all of a sudden you're facing down with a 10 wheel dump truck. Yeah. Going mm -hmm. the other way. So Yeah, we, we definitely have some tree limiting to do. It's yeah. closing in. And culverts, how are we doing on culverts? Uh, at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't, we're, we've been straight out trying to get the other roads ready for okay. paving. So we haven't started those, but we know the ones you're going to do? Yep, we okay. have a plan going. And, and that was one of the things, too, that we talked about as far as uh, Dane Road. You know, should we start at one end and go through the other? I know that's a pretty big cold, but we got to change. Because the rain keeps coming. Unfortunately. So. Yeah. What is the culvert study? How does that assist you? Well, I mean, I like that we have like a whole list of all the, you know. Bad ones. Yeah, it's it, it does help. It makes it easy to start off with the red ones and go around and inspect them and uh, see which ones are the worst and which ones we're gonna change first. One of the things that, and I don't know that we've actually done it yet, but I think we've gotta do it, is driveway permits. I think we've got a number on them, I think we've gotta sign them. I think we gotta get a program together. Right now it's pretty loose ended. The homeowner comes to you and says they wanna put a driveway in. You see the sight lines or the drainage or whatever issues are in your mind. And then they put their driveway in. And so it starts off actually with the code officer. Yeah. And then comes to me. But I have seen a few driveways around that I have not seen any paperwork on right. it. And that already seem to be installed. Right. So I'm not sure how that happens, if it's supposed to be, that's a temporary driveway or what, but I haven't signed any paperwork on any of that. Yeah, well, even temporary driveways, I mean, we got to have two forms. Here's a temporary permit, here's a permanent permit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got uh, 
a lot of building going on. And well, for instance, it. we get guys that will put in logging access, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, if it's across a ditch line and they don't put a culvert in, they just fill it with gravel. That's a problem. Yeah, uh, and and yeah. a lot of times it seems like the temporary logging access that's there it becomes the stays driving. stays forever. It, it may become yeah. disused, but it blocks the ditch. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know it doesn't matter whether it's being used or not if it's if it's blocking the flow of water that we're trying to shed from the road and right. and move away, then it's a problem. Yep. Yep. We have one of those in Dane. We're just going to dig it on as we're going by doing ditch lines. We're going to yeah. return it back to ditch line. Yeah, and you look at, I mean, the construction of these some of these driveways. I mean, I had a problem which I hopefully fixed about water running out of my driveway on that blood chill road. But there's a lot of them up. I mean, I, I can see them all winter long where, you know, you got ice build up because there's no well, construction parameters that anybody's dealing with other than the contractor putting in the driveways. I, I know, and not to pick on Lead Shell, but driving up Lead Shell on a day when it's raining hard and you just, you know, driveway after driveway after driveway, the water's running right out yeah. across the road. Yeah. Not as big a problem in the, in the summertime, but it certainly is in the winter. Uh, and these are not, some of these driveways have been there for many years. Many, many years. Yep. Uh, yeah, some of them we aren't going to fix, but and if, if, we don't, we, if, we go don't, in, if we don't start addressing it, it's not going to get better. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I just I think we need to set up a permit process so that we're clear what's going on, you're clear what is going on, so it isn't sort of they. Well, I talked to Jack, and Jack said it was okay. And never bother talking to you. I mean, that's a, that's how we. I, I, I think that's I think he always. He, he does the paperwork on them, and, uh, but uh, I don't know that there's a system of tracking them necessarily. And you're the guy that signs off on it when it's done, right? So somebody puts in an application for a driveway permit and fills it out with Jack, then it goes to you. You meet with the individual and say, here's what you have to do. This size culvert, this, that, or the other, right? So I don't usually meet with them, but I go and look at it, yeah. and I write down what it needs, and then I bring it back for Jack, and then Jack, I think, is okay. the one that distributes right. the permit. And right now, we're getting every, we've got them right there, right. every building permit application comes before us, and we look at it, see what it is, sign off on it. I don't know why we're not doing the same thing with driveways. Thank you. So. Yeah. But. You in terms of closing the loop, once the driveway is done, you're supposed to inspect it and sign off on it, right? Correct. Yeah. And it sounds like that's not always happening. So if I don't sign off on it, I don't know then, what happens because there's a few that I hadn't signed off on. I haven't seen anything change. Right. Well, you and I have had this conversation, haven't we? Yep. And how many driveways on Durgan Road have you and I discussed? There's a couple. Okay. There was one that failed three times, and finally, when the asphalt truck caved it in, Carol rebuilt it, and it's now legal, isn't it? Yep. Okay, the one that's on the dangerous corner had collapsed three years ago, and it's still collapsed, isn't it? Uh, I don't know if it's collapsed, but... Well, it's dysfunctional, isn't it? The other thing is there's a temporary one coming up Ledge Hill Road for a logging operation, mm -hmm. and it's been seven years that that's temporary. And yeah, uh, they okay. have they have mitigated the water a little bit. Did they ever put a oh, is it the Jim Duke's old place? I don't know. No, no, it's just it's an ongoing project. That, okay. As I understand it, slowly, huh? as yes. I understand it, there are three types of driveways that go in here. There's one on town the road where there's a process, and I'm amazed that it doesn't get a number until after it passes through you. The other permits do, yeah. and I agree with my chairman that it's been an issue. Number two is the driveways on the state road, you never see, do you? No. Okay, but they're still driveways and they create issues. But not on our roads. That's, so right. that's right. But then there's, but then, and there's, then there's temporary driveways that come in. Yep. So, 
I'll be glad to sit down and work with you if you want. Now, at my tag meetings, driveways have become a real issue by every town. And two road agents before you, when Reg Colby came in, and we put my mother's driveway in and my father's, they came in, put the, put the uh, driveway in, put the headers in, uh, used the right material, and we, and we reimbursed the town. And that's the way it's being done in a lot of other towns. But that's not fair to take it out of your current budget. That needs to be budgeted for, right? I don't know how that's going to... Well, I can see a problem with that. Yeah. Too. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's how it works in other towns. Yep. I can see if they don't correct it, maybe we do something to correct it. Maybe that's how it works. But I have seen the driveway that comes onto the street, and we made them correct it put that little gully in, and he said he can't get in and out of, with his car without scraping every time. What's he driving for a car? And, you know, Is that up on County Road? It was, yeah. correct. Yeah, we, we kind of fought with that for quite a while. Oh. Yeah. Now, I have another uh, <clears throat> comment, and I want to be as delicate as possible. But then he needs to put catch base on the side. And you, you, yeah. go, you go inspect my driveway and issue a permit, and then your company installs it. Yeah. Okay. Right? That, that could be an issue, couldn't it? Yep, could be an issue. Yeah. And I, it's not an issue with me, but... <laughs> well, if we're, if we're requiring people who put in driveways to use Mr. Bean's private company to do the work, that's a problem. Yeah. Right? I mean, but we can't... It's a small town. I mean, we can't eliminate his, his opportunity to do work just because he's a road agent. Right. The only time I think it would be a problem so, would be if he was and, 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 and I can see that it would be a problem road. if the only driveways that get signed off on are the ones that his company does. Are you doing I don't that? think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting madder and madder. Yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, if that's a situation, then that's an obvious problem. No, but that's but the fact, huh? no, no, no. But the, the fact that that somebody hires your company to do the work on the driveway after you said this is what it needs to be to be done right, uh, I, I don't see there's a conflict of interest there. Uh, only if it becomes a an unwritten condition of getting the approval to have your guys do it and. I've never, I've never had any sense of that kind of a if thought an process. It's an argument about design. I mean, general contractors are no less obdurate than anybody else. But if some general contra contractor thinks his design is better than your design, then we need to have a, a highway department. You know, then we need to have. We just need to function correctly. So yeah. right about this point. Yeah. yeah. Right. We're pretty easy going. We just want it to function. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, can I shift gears? Sure. I came across the attached article about uh, tree cutting. It was an ad from Center Harbor. And, you know, you and I had this conversation. Yep. Uh, you currently stash the individual bills in several different categories, depending on what the project is. Would it be appropriate to come up with our own bid proposal and submit it in next year's budget? I'd be willing to work on that. When it comes to tree cutting, you have after storm cleanup, you have dead trees, you have trees that are causing visibility problems or your snow plow keeps hitting. There's, there's, there's projects that need to be done. And you and I talked about, for example, something when we redo our big projects is that we cut the, the trees back two years ahead of time. So you're not having to cut trees, haul them off, dig rocks, do ditches, pound the pavement, do the culverts, right? Yeah. I think that's uh, can, I, can I work with you on that? So, yep. So uh, we're, we're talking, uh, what you're suggesting is that we that we put our tree removal out for bid. Yes. Which is consistent with uh, our purchasing procedure to periodically do that, right? So what, what I have been doing is I use 
three different contractors. Mm -hmm. So when I need something done, like a branch, <laughs> hanging me to a road, yeah. I have more than one person to go to. And they all are competitive. Mm -hmm. Their pricing has been very competitive. And it's nice that they're in town and they do good work. Mm -hmm. We've never had a problem. But I think what Lloyd was really getting at was I'm spending time trimming trees, cutting the dead trees. We do that a lot of that ourselves and it goes under whatever summer, fall maintenance, whatever mm -hmm. happens. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, have some tree work done where it's all going to be crane or bucket truck. And you know, that's what we're going to have under tree removal. Mm -hmm. But what he, he mentioned here <coughs> was, is there a way to hire a company that takes care of the year round so that when there's a dead tree? You know? Or more than one company. Yeah. You know, think or about a this. branch across the road. So, so it's all in there. It's in there. When, you, when Carol is delivering asphalt, he has more than one company delivering asphalt, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's us hammer in the truck. Right. I, I, I'd be well, to, I saw that in words, including not just <coughs> serious tree removal and cranes and bucket trucks, but brush, roadside brush removal. And that's what yep. that ad reads. Yep, I'd be willing to um, you know, include that. It's probably so, a bigger number than you're expecting, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but what you're looking to do then is to go to just one guy that does everything rather than than using. I, I personally am flexible. I don't care if it's one company, or two companies, or three companies, or one company does. Why don't you come back to us with something? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. just kind of talking to here right now. Yeah. Correct. We, you know, as far as like tree trimming and stuff like that, the roads are growing. In. We've done a lot of it in the past, but yeah, we haven't had the budget for us. I wanted to shade a little bit, keeps the snow from melting, but the brush, obviously, in the right of way needs. Well, he and I've talked about it in some some of the classes he's taken, I've taken, and that is, you need the trees back to the stone wall. Because if there's a canopy like this, what are the roots doing to the road and the drainage ditch, right? The roots are usually the same. That's right. And, and there's a way of taking the dead wood out, getting the canopy back a little bit so that in bad weather, the trees aren't coming right down. There's a, what they call heat degree days that help you with your material melting the roads, but it still looks aesthetically. We also have scenic roads here in town that the town voted on. Yes. Which are limited to the kind of tree cutting. Right. right. And there's always goats. Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, other, the other thing is, I've talked to two uh, 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 tree cutting companies. For example, uh, there were a couple logging operations on Sodom Road and New Road. The company cut the trees. They'd take the trees and chip them up, or the brush and chip them up. They you know, could work a deal with a local uh, vendor. So uh, I know that's been done uh, in a neighborly fashion. Okay, I changed subject. Okay. You got more? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's money in the budget, I believe, to install the inner rear fender wells for the. Uh, I'm talking, yep, I actually truck. saw that this morning. And, and I, I left you a note there, uh, so there's still funds there. As I understand it, the other towns have gone to it, and you thought it was a good idea to extend the life of the <coughs> right? Yep. Okay. If you drive the trucks someplace and need a ride back, I'd make myself available to you. Okay. Right. Um, the status of roadside mowing. They're working on it. They'll be here for a month. What, <laughs> what is the company that we hired? Uh, I think it's called en Energized Lines or something okay. like that. Okay. And are there any written terms and any written agreement or any contract with them? Yeah, we have a contract with them. Yeah, can You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, that was, was oh, yeah. last fall. Last fall, yeah, that was last fall. We all okay. it. And they're going to be able to do it within the budget? They, that's the plan. Yep. They, they have a uh, contract saying that. So. And, they'll get, and they'll get all our roads done because in past years, we, <laughs> things are broken down and boy, you've been in a tough spot. So. Well, we just have the budget a lot of times. Yeah. So that was well. Does their contract in, uh, include mowing adjacent town properties? like the <coughs> townhouse, uh, 
19 Mile Bay parking lot, Sergeant's Crossing Road, Lakeside. So we showed them everything that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So yes, so with Lakeside and all that, they're aware of all that. Pier 19, they're aware of that. Uh, like, okay. Have you spoken to Bob at the Melbourne Church? He's found where the boundary line is there on the bank, and he's willing to work with who uh, you no, I haven't heard from him, but I'm sure that he's going so to the answer the is, is the here. answer is the church doesn't own the hillside. And that's on town property. Okay. Right. He's he's delineated where the boundary is for you. Yeah, I, I have a feeling I knew it was on top of right. but right. uh, we reach up as far as we can. That's yeah. what we've always done. Uh, is there any way, with Bob's permission or the church's permission, the machine can reach down, or is that not safe? Well, I don't think they can yeah, be in the car. It's in that in the be up. Okay. In the uh, what, what's been mentioned to me is they're getting a historical marker or doing something with grave by the lake. And I thought it was positive when they said, you know, the lake's straight. The docks, the uh, you're talking by Lake Street, you mean Lake Road? Yeah, that's right. right. You know, it's been an improvement there, and you know, it enhances their property too. So, well, I, I, we, we continue to talk about that hillside, and it's great to keep it to keep the growth down. You take it down too far, and now you get an erosion problem. We don't want to create that on that hillside. I know we have an issue with. Uh, poison ivy up in there yes. as well, right? And there are ways to deal with poison ivy to to knock it down, you know, uh, herbicide that will specifically, I mean, it's attack it, but you, it's not, you don't spray the whole, you got to spray the, the, the individual plants. Uh, and whether that would, whether that would allow the other growth to come up in there or not, I, I don't know. But maybe that's a, I mean, talk to the new owner of Spider Rock, maybe a low growing juniper or something like that would stabilize that bank and keep us from having to mow it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be a separate project, I guess. Right. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 I have a family that wouldn't be, you know, cheap either. Mm -hmm. Right. But in the long run, if you're spending, you know, $1,000 a year mowing it, I don't know if it's that much, I'll just pick my number. Then if you get a 10 year solution to that, that's ten thousand dollars shouldn't have to spend. So I think it would be interesting to look at it at any rate. And it could be that the members of the church or whatever could get together a plant raising fund. So I think there's some alternatives to just fighting with poison ivy and crap grass. Yeah, I think that's a positive discussion talking about spraying Japanese knotweed as a go-ahead? I know that our, we've signed the permits, so I don't know if they've come back yet, but we should be and do they have, do you have, have you developed a list of target areas? Yes, it's basically the target areas that we have always had. And including the dump? Yes. Okay. Um, while the company is in Tuftonboro, is there a way to coordinate with the areas along the state roads? I mean, that, that's kind of a whole separate okay. permit issue and everything. Yeah. The same thing. I, I, you know, right. the, the idea that we're going to actually coordinate what the town's doing with what the state's doing, you know. <laughs> so I didn't make it too complicated. Well, exactly. I, I was merely asked the question and yep. I said I would ask it. <laughs> I was also asked the question is, is there a way that property owners can hire this company? The plant is very invasive and it spreads easily. Yep, um, they still have to go through the same permitting process. But so, but so each location has to be permitted, and, and that landowner has to. You know, can we make the name of the company aware? Of aware, of aware. Yeah, so it's just a yep. thought. So yeah, we use Urban Tree out of Rochester. Right. Uh, the other thing is uh, stop line striping. Is there money in the budget to do that? There is. I've talked to. Um, what are your I, thoughts? I, we're going we're gonna to do it. I told him put us on the list when he's in the area. Mm -hmm. well, we talked about it. My thought is that we do a test project of the five <coughs> intersections that he was yep. with one, seven, one. one seven, yeah. that, that, that 
seems reasonable that we try it. That's what we agreed on. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's what I have mm -hmm. scheduled. Um, at previous meetings, I've asked about the granite post issue on Durgan Road, and the general <coughs> response is that there are several such issues around town. <laughs> is this something that would make it easier for you to plow? Is there a I guess they open it to everybody in the room. Is that something we can work on? Um, yep, I mean, we can figure out a way to come up with a, uh, a form, basically, that everybody has to follow when they're setting their mailbox or whatever. <coughs> well, it's generally right near the driveway, so maybe we can make it part of the driveway process. I mean, and I talked to the, the rural postal delivery people and their only concern is the height of the mailbox and having being able to pull off. Yeah, so really right. But they do like to pull off at least the half their car off the road is right. what I when I talk to them. Right. It makes it safer for people to get sure. around. Yeah. I'm still researching it through the tech committee, but there is one town that says your mailbox post needs to be at least three and a half feet away from the pavement. Not the overhang with the box. Three and a half feet, uh, and, they, and they, that that went through their planning board. So I, I hate yeah, to have a rule for everything. But, the time but, uh, but uh, I told you an experience I had with a snow plow that came out, and I witnessed the accident. More serious. Mm. I saw it on Durgan Road now three times in three winters, and I don't want to put your guys at risk. <laughs> We're still doing that with telephone poles, unfortunately, too. Yep. We have a few telephone poles that are in situation. Yes, you, you are right there. And uh, there's yeah. also some interesting case law around that, but that's another, another issue. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Okay, and, and more? I have an appointment. I'll send it to Boyd Smith. You and okay. Anything else for our road agent? Okay, uh, good. Thank you for getting the Thanks. striping down uh, before school and then I, I still hear positive comments. Oh, good. So that's a pat on the back. Yeah. We'll do that next year too. Yeah, I think it's a snow plowing ordinance. I don't know if you guys want to do a work mm -hmm. session, but there's other yeah. 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 Oh no, not today, yeah. I just not don't today, Karen. Yeah. No, I don't want to throw that on spring that on you. I just yeah. I know you yeah. talked about doing a work Can session. Can you open up and see if Jack's around? Please. Thank you. Yeah, he's there. He's next. <laughs> sure. Jack Pass. Be a wise guy. Our next appointment is with our building inspector, Mr. Jack Parsons. Morning. Yeah. Dr. Jack Parsons, right? <laughs> Seventy-five building permits to date. Nine new homes. I've done two hundred and forty-eight inspections. The engineer that we're using for the two wars is still working on stuff with the state. I just kind of so not give him not give him an answer. So he's still okay. doing it. And you got a letter the other day. I think with some pictures. Rick's working on that, and another issue up on Mount Royal. So yeah. we'll try to get those two straight out. And so I, I just met with. Dr. Brooks. Brooks, right. And what did they want to do with phasing it? That one probably actually kind of makes sense because it is actually kind of two projects in one. So, cost wise, I'm not sure you know, if they're apples or apples because the only thing you got, but I think doing it two different phases would be okay. And, and, and is it, is it going to get crossways with the state permits? No, because the pay, state permits are for five years. It doesn't say you have to do it all at the same time. Okay. Okay, and we met with, with um, Clay this morning from the transfer station. Yep. He's gotten uh, 16 full containers full of CD. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, uh, you've issued 75 building permits, but it seems as though the CD is really exploding on us. Is that it's because right. dumpsters are so expensive that contractors aren't getting dumpsters anymore. They're bringing it up there. But is is that? I mean, the we got seventy five building permits. How many of those are teardowns, or how many of those are have major C and D? I mean, issues? most of them are. Well, out of those nine new houses, so obviously maybe I think this year we had 
I mean, they tear down some houses, they get dumpsters. That's not a big deal. But the remodels, I was just a building permit. Well, you did it Friday, one of the neck road. Guy has a dump trailer. Yeah. Off it goes. And we do a house remodel with you know all the sheetrock on the insulation, all whatever. So right. you know, one of the that's things what they're doing because mm -hmm. dumpsters are at three times the price of going up there. One of the things that we're talking about and Clay's going to be exploring is the possibility of not taking trailers of CD. In other words, right. pickup truck that's fine, but bigger stuff force the contractor to get a dumpster. But what if the homeowner doing their own project and they have a dump trail? I'm just throwing well, it out there. Well, if they have a dump trail, they're probably going to pick up truck to haul the dump trail. Right, they're right. Like so, so if, you know, yeah, yeah. if, if, if the, the answer industry. is no, no <clears throat> trailers, right. right. if you're doing your own project and you've got a, a truck, you take a little bit up to the transfer station, you throw it in the... Sometimes. Right. right. Yeah. And you don't, you don't take 16 foot material. Correct. And yeah. That's what he's getting up there. So well, tell him no, nothing like a four feet. You, you can tell well, them that, but it's a matter of whether. Plus, when they're dumping it in, yeah. it's all sticking up. Yeah, there. yeah, it's not even. Yeah, they're not now throwing it and placing it. Yeah. So we have to spend time and labor putting things together. So yeah, yeah. Hold up, so. And, and um, a big piece of this is not the total volume, but the way it arrives. So if you, have, if you have a huge dump trailer and you dump it, Right, it's one a, of the containers. You know, it takes right. it, it takes most of the container. Yeah. So you get several of these on a weekend day, and mm -hmm. suddenly you don't have any container space for right. somebody else to bring stuff in. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So that's something that we're talking about. The other thing we talked about the uh, with the road agent mm -hmm. was codifying or solidifying the driveway permit process. Mm -hmm. I I think we're in agreement that that process needs to be similar to the building permit process mm -hmm. where somebody comes in and applies for a driveway permit. Mm -hmm. Jim it goes, to, goes to Jim, but it also has to come to us. Yeah, I bring them in, the new ones, yeah. Okay. We haven't had any in a while. The last well, two I brought in. So whether they were coming in or yeah, whether... Yeah, they so, so do we issue temporary driveway permits? The guy's going to do logging and he's going to put it... To a point, yeah, and he goes and looks at it as well, to where it goes. I mean, any driveway permit that comes in goes to Jim, because the process is I go and they fill it out. So, so if I'm going to... goes to Jim, I get it back, I put a number on it, then it's in the file, they build it to what he told me, whether it's a 15 or 12 inch culvert. Right. And then when it's done, he goes and looks at it to make sure it was built correctly, and he signs it again, I put it in the folder. Because he's, he's mentioned, or he mentioned this morning, that there are one or two or more driveways that he's seen around town that he didn't know anything about. So I think it it would behoove him or you to get together. Yeah, he's just good if he sees them, call me and tell me. I'll look in the file to see, but yeah. everyone I've, since I've pretty much done it. And it could be just a, a, as, as Bill was saying, it could be a temporary. Yeah. They don't think they need a permit. Right. Some so loggers will come in and get one, other ones won't. On state roads, they have to. Yeah. So, state, so, so yeah. but we can require permits for temporary access too. Oh, I assume so. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. well, right. have to know about it. You know. Yeah. You know, a lottery does. I don't see the intent of it. Why don't they know right. Right. I can't preclude Why? someone from ac accessing their problem. Correct. Property, but we we can. Well, to a point, you can do the road change. I mean, the state does based on visibility. Yeah, and, the, and yeah. I'm not certain well, there. The, the bigger issue that I see with these temporary accesses is they stay. Yeah, and. You know they'll they'll put crushed stone down right for access in blocks the ditch okay and then well most of them will throw a temporary culvert in most of them do but well we can take a ride around town i'll bet we can find half a dozen temporary accesses yeah. where there ought to be a culvert right. and there isn't right so mm -hmm. I, I don't disagree with you but right. the, yeah. where, where it needs a culvert for drainage and it doesn't have it mm -hmm. is a problem right. and particularly when it never goes away Right, just there. You know, and we're we're hitting it from two different departments. Mm -hmm. Jim's gonna bitch about or complain about, excuse me, the water running off into the road. Correct. And your issues are with access and sight lines and that sort of thing. So we need to make sure everything's right. coordinated. Right, because that's why the people will flag where they want to put it. And originally, he goes out and looks at it and says, right. "Yeah, it's fine." If he doesn't like where they place it, he should tell them it shouldn't it be there. Right. When it just happened, I thought that we needed to move it to the site line of development that's over on the 
federal corner road that's proposed to go in. Yeah, it's proposed to go in, and that's actually in sight line because that was engineered, right? So there's no real issue with that. I mean, the white mountain. But there was a discussion about it. Yeah, they, they were yeah, the plan for it, yeah. yeah. All right, any other big issues on tap? Generator at the transfer station. Just, they were all on order, just waiting for them to come in. So, yeah, and Scott told me, he told me when they were going to do it because I have to notify the gas company two weeks in advance. Right. So, so, and then they have to figure out where they're going to put the tanks and. Yeah, we, have, we don't know all that. So, the transfer station going against the building, the generator going against the building, and when they have raw water up there, take their back out because they have some of those concrete blocks they use and the bins down where that metal is. Take a couple of those and pump them up in front to protect them. And do we need to pour a pad for it? No, it it's enough? sitting there. It'll sit right on the pavement. It's fine. And the generator is fine. The pavement comes with its own pad. And the tanks, because the bottoms have a ring on them, put them on the cement blocks. Just you know, crushing the asphalt. But it's a matter of when you get them in and place in the big concrete blocks. If I'd rather do that than put olives into the pavement. Right. Better off with the blocks on top, and then if they have an issue, they can always pick them up and move them. So when you're you're expecting that? He ordered them. They said they're about three weeks out, and you ordered them a couple. So if you can months. remember when you go up to the transfer station the next time, just to uh, remind Clay that he needs a bit more water. Yeah, he, he, I know he knows that. I he needs to get it going now because you know radiant heat. You need to have the thing fired up and. In oh, yeah. September, right? It's not gonna gonna take days. To yeah. So I'm going to say Ed was supposed to get back to him with a price on yeah. um, just a different boiler and different controls, or just changing the boiler and the controls a long way until they die. Yeah. yeah. They could last another ten years. They might last till next week. We don't know. That's the issue. And that's a big expense of that system up there was replacing all those controls. Really. Yeah, those technical controls. Does it make sense to do the boiler ASAP? I would just do the boiler. Yeah, next year, put you probably budget in five thousand dollars for a boiler. Yeah. You know, somewhere around that area, just changing the boiler and then seeing how things go. And maybe next year, change the controls and put some money in the budget and they put in that year. I told you about it. And if I remember days. correctly, the boiler that's in there is oversized for. It's not oversized. The problem with that boiler is is because it's already heat up there. Never fired hard enough. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't fire the boiler hard enough, so it condensated inside. When it gets so much condensation built up in there, it actually clogged itself up. And a tempering valve doesn't solve it. Well, a tempering valve, valve, yeah, you should have a tempering valve on the system so you're tempering the water to go to the radiant, and the right. boiler fires at 185, 190 degrees. Then it cleans itself out, but that boiler was modulated down so it didn't burn right. that hot. And so we can There's nothing you can do about it now. Yeah, but the boiler is old enough, it needs to replace pretty right. much. Yeah. I've got one of those myself. Yeah. Right, so else? you've uh, been dealing with the subdivision uh, application, right? For? Farm Island. Well, I saw the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I, what I looked at, everything was conforming to our zoning. Right. Okay, so good. that's, I think it's, we haven't come into planning for it on the 18th. On the 18th, correct. Yep. I've had, uh, well, I've there's had, lots of interest. I've had lots, lots of, interest of interest as well. And and is it all what I explain to people, people have what I explain to people is the process. And, right. And uh, that, uh, yeah. that yeah. those that are interested come to the hearing. Right. And if you have something to offer, uh, it's more helpful right. that it be. Uh, positive in terms of suggestions rather right. than no, we don't like this. Right, there's no view easements around, there's nothing they, you know. And I remember the discussions in the early 80s about not having one acre zone on the lake. Right. And the uproar from all these people that, you know, <laughs> oh, you gotta allow us access, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I mean, existing lots of records, existing lots of records, so it doesn't affect anybody on the property now. Right. Yeah. It's anything new. Right. So. I just, uh, I, I have no idea how they're going to get there, but I'm sure. Exactly. Harilla Landing or someplace they'll find boat splits for them. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. There's nothing down to 19 mile beta. Is that probably. Maybe five or six down there that people rent it.
possibly sell them, who knows? But yeah. that's about all that's left out there. Even, I mean, buying one of those is 75 grand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, I think selling the lots is going to be more difficult than it might be yeah. here. So. Yeah. But it would be nice not to have 19 mile bay look like all of the back. So yeah. many people will buy two lots. And yeah. Did you get your letter of appreciation? Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for making a difference. Thank you. All right. Any other pressing issues? We're not, not throwing anybody out of their house. We're not. We're not no, we did. We did. Up a couple just things, keep so. an eye on the boat guy. On let your work. He had a boat the other day. He did work. On I know. He could I just, just swap. I, mean, I don't worry. I did like okay. that way. And, he has and his patrol. He's up also, in the air. We've also had letters about Dame Road. And I know you're watching know, that as well. Right now, that's what we're kind of dealing with right now. So, okay. yeah, the one up on Mont Road. So. Is there anything we can do to help you on those two properties? We're just, just, just going to continue on with it because they don't seem to they start and they stop. So. Yeah. Anything going well, on? I, I have the same problem with mine's in the cutting trees. trees. <laughs> that's um, not have a call under a third party inspection company for the soils and the concrete and they're just working with bowing on some specs on the yeah what they need and that'll take care the of the slump. Slump in soils. Yeah. Okay, great. So is there a groundbreaking date? They say they're gonna have one. They said we'll have to start before I says no, I says the fire station didn't start after the twenty or I think so. You can always find a piece of dirt around it. Yeah, they usually just Push stockpile those pieces of dirt and throw some shovels in it. Yeah. Right, they're really. Right. Kind of just, big scissors. Just, uh, you yeah. know. They've been working on the budget there, trying to cut a few things out because the estimates can be lower than the. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. You're welcome. Next item of business review and approval of minutes. Thank you, Karen, for putting that off for as long as you did. Um, Don't let it happen again. Right. The first set of minutes happened on July 1st, am I right? Yes. yes. At 9 a.m. Any changes, alterations, or editorial comment? Page one. Go to the paragraph that says appointments. Yeah. Eight line from the end of that paragraph starts with money for an EOP center. Mm -hmm. What? I think it's EOC. Uh, Edward. Oh, I think you're right. I think it is EOC. Thank you. Money. C. Charlie. Yeah. And that's it for me. Okay. Uh, I don't hear anything. Okay. I'll move approval as edited. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Um, next set of minutes is the non-public July 1st at 9.57 a.m. Uh, move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And do we have a non-public to follow up on this? Not to the end of the month. Not to the end of the month. Yeah. Right. This, these will remain sealed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item on the agenda signature file. We have um, a number of appointments. The first one is for Joe and Joe Ann Svensson as a volunteer at the swap shop. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. These only have, this only has one signature. Is that right? Okay? Seven, 11. Is it the 11th? Uh, eight. No. Eight. <coughs> and the next is for Stephen Andrew as a, as a volunteer at the swap shop. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next 
next was um, due to a letter from um, Lake Surgeon Planning Commission, Transportation Advisory Committee, and the um, Selectman Woods' uh, term was about to expire. We need to reappoint him. So I will move that we reappoint Selectman Wood as our representative for the Transportation Advisory Committee. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you accept? Yes. <laughs> uh, is there a second name there as an alternate? Not on this form. He doesn't want to. We Mark are. Howard was before. Right. But I know he has a business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do I sign it? Sure. Yeah, why not? You're selecting. The selectman update. Do we have any updates? Um, I don't have anything. You tell us about your trip to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not a benefit. So, yeah. Mr. No. Wood? Uh, I understand that we got one job review from the fire department and there still are some others outstanding. Any word on them? Karen? No. And we have two that I know you've been busy, you're, you're working on. So. Right. I noticed that the, in the calendar for the uh, Board of Selectmen's meetings, there's only two scheduled meetings for September. I was wondering if we should increase this number. It's the start of the budget and the CIP season. I'm going to treat that as a rhetorical question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any else? Um, Saturday, July 13th, I'll be attending the Mural Lake Watershed uh, meeting. Is also yeah. at the church fair and also uh, Islander. 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 Islanders Association meeting. Yeah. Right. So. Are you going to the Islanders Association? I will. I, will. I guess I'm, I'm up. You, so, yeah. and, I'm glad somebody can be in. Great fan of Islands, I'm going. So um, that's this coming Saturday. Okay, so I'll post that. And hopefully, uh, we don't really need to because I'm the only one going. Oh, I thought you said you were going to. No. 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 He's like, going to go to Mirror Lake. Oh, excuse me. Okay. I don't know how this all got jumbled up. Okay, and uh, then I'll, um, the, I'll let the fire chief know and I'll go. Pick right, up and, 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 stuff. and Steve Wingate has said that he doesn't feel like going, so I don't know if that means he's not going or just Yeah, he'd rather play. not. He, yeah. yeah, so if you could speak yeah. on his behalf, you'll see that in the green folder, too. Yeah. Well, Kyle Island easement being postponed. Right. Okay. The, uh, one of the issues on the uh, agenda is regarding the Cow Island property owned by the town. And we've had the Conservation Commission and I've spoken with Lakes Region Conservation about this, so it says um, Selectman Marcus. And, and I don't believe we're gonna entertain a conservation easement quite yet on that property, primarily because we're focused currently on getting all the septic systems into compliance. And Lakes Region felt as though having to deal with that and manage the property was just a little cumbersome, so we're gonna hold on to it. Um, and as I said, the, the Islanders meeting is at 9.30 a.m. on Ragged Island. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're also, um, Sending out a questionnaire. Have you both reviewed this? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's an additional questionnaire vis-a-vis -vis the the uh, cable company, and that's that's going to go out this week. 
Does that look okay? I, I can put, do like a web survey type Yeah, thing. it looks good. I think you might want to post it in the paper or do something different because some of these people don't have cables. They probably don't have internet. So, mm. might be a, I have no problem putting it in the paper. Yeah, or, or condense it to right. the town is, is, is doing a survey of cable issues in Tufton Borough. Please contact Karen at the town office and, and I can send them the survey. Right. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Right. Yeah, um, yeah there's a substance abuse um, meeting coming up and uh, the Carroll County Department of Corrections transitioning from jail to community. Oh, yeah. Is it at the very bottom of the first page? I remember looking funny for the heat. Oh, July 24th. Okay. So I'm going to try to put that on my phone. And... I noticed in the uh, uh, correspondence that there are some... Well, there's a class in, in Multiboro. There's also a webinar the next day on right to know, so I mentioned that to Karen as a possible. She handles those issues and it seemed to be a more of a um, selectman secretary format as opposed to a selectman. She's going to get back to us on that. Yeah, I did read the descriptions on each and it sounded pretty like a, for people that haven't had it yet. Not yeah. like, oh, new, new things or whatnot. Yeah, I didn't oh, know if there was yeah. anything new in that. But there. I yeah. ask. Yeah. I would just offer that attending it is probably a good idea. Okay, sure. Uh, I mean, I've gone to several in the past, and what happens is you cover the same basic material, but there is case law that comes along, different interpretation. There's some changes that come out of the legislature, and it's uh, uh, it's always helpful to have a refresher and an update. Okay, sure. Uh, and yeah, and you never know. You might meet somebody that has the same problems with that. Okay, great. I uh, will do yeah. so. Then. <coughs> okay. Um, nice. Well, let's go into that. And I guess I'll just restate that isn't it uh, this week that we're having the planning boards having their meeting with regard to the presentation on. Uh, uh, municipal wastewater right. systems, yes. Thursday night uh, at the town house, I believe. Great. Did you see the thing that we looked there about the police station facility? I don't know if you want to discuss that today or not. Yeah, I was going to try to wait until the police chief came back with okay. his report. Any other uh, <coughs> public comment? I have a question about the uh, <coughs> right to know. And uh, as, as Bill just stated, every once in a while, something new comes along and it's changed. Is it actually changed on the web so that you, when you want to download the 91A, are those changes? Is someone in charge of making those changes, uh, at literally? The, at the state level, you mean? Well, yeah, I mean, can I go on the internet? So if, if something happens this past week and next week, whatever, if something changed in 91A, can, is it automatically changed on the web when you want to download that document? Does that change? The, the RSA, when you go to download the RSA? Right. I don't know, to be honest with you. I was just want to call yeah, it the state. Generally, state. generally speaking, the RSAs are voted on by both houses and then the governor, but it's always for a date certain in the future mm -hmm. so that it becomes effective. So when it becomes effective, they've had an opportunity to update the oh, RSA. I'm just curious. Yeah. So, so there's two ways the law changes. One is through the legislative process, okay? And the state maintains a database yeah. with all the RSAs and they do update them. I can't tell you how 
Okay, you know how current it is, but I think it's pretty good. The other way the law changes is through the courts. Okay, so somebody takes something to court, and a decision comes out of that, and that affects interpretation of the RSAs. Uh, and uh, and, and the, the ultimate effect of that, as I understand it, is is when it goes to the, the state supreme court. So at, at the trial court level, it sort of gives. You, am I speaking correctly on this? Sort of gives you a heads up yeah. down the road, but it isn't until the supreme court says this is and how it is. Even or when, even when that happens, the RSAs aren't updated. It's not going to change but the RSA, well, but it does. Well, well, you'll see as a footnote. Mm. And so you gotta you gotta read it pretty assiduously. I was just curious. Yeah. So case law, I don't. It does not change the RSAs, but it does change the interpretation that. Yes, it, it can I mean, be theoretically, the legislature is supposed to address case law that that is um, contrary to the RSA. And but you need to call Concord for any of these answers. So it's way above our pay grade. Well, I just call my representative. There you go. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Any other business? Um, will we adjourn? We need to go into a non-public, I believe. Do we? Okay. Do we not, Karen? I don't have anything I don't think for you. I thought I saw a job review. Are we going to wait and do Oh, that's just the review, I suppose. But that was only for our review. It was done by the department okay. head. Okay. I'll second your motion to adjourn. Okay. Right. You're free now. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you.